Do you find it easy to start conversations, but then kind of struggle at the goal line, you know, making that final connection, closing the deal? If that's you, you're definitely not alone. And today we're going to explore two very powerful psychological theories that can actually help you turn that initial spark of a meeting into a meaningful connection. And those are the boy-girl theory and the better deal theory. So what's the boy-girl theory? This is based on the idea that people, quite frankly, desire what they perceive as unattainable. When you appear indifferent to the outcome, you become more desirable. That unattainable person just seems more valuable because they're perceived as harder to get. Now, conversely, and what's kind of more important here, when somebody's too eager or, or too readily available, they become less desirable in the eyes of the other person. If you pursue somebody too aggressively, they might lose interest because your availability reduces the perceived value of your attention. If you want to connect with somebody, imagine you're here and the other person's here. And you got your space around you and they've got their space around them. And there's the space in between. Again, both physically and conceptually. So trying to follow. If you want to make that connection with that person, you've somehow got to get across that gulf. You got to get across that chasm in between. You got to cross that gap in between. And there's three ways that you can do that. Number one, you can jump right across the chasm immediately and be like, come on, come on, come on, come on. Do you like me? Do you like me? Do you like me? What do you think? Generally, when you do that, there's a tendency to make the other person go like, okay, they're coming. So I'm going to defend. They're coming at me. I'm going to be like, all right, no, 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 no. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And maybe at the end of the night, they're like, okay, they're cute. They're funny. I guess I'll go with them. Right. That could happen. But when you go up and you're kind of like, do you like me? Do you like me? Do you like me? Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. You're generally putting yourself at a disadvantage. Option two, you just sit back aloof and make no effort to cross the gap at all. You're just like the super cool mystery alpha rock star, James Bond rock star man. Super cool. And you hope that they are intrigued enough to come across that gap themselves and come to you. That will almost never happen unless you're like exceptionally good looking or something like that. Option number three, and this is what I advocate for, you're not like jumping across, come on, come on, come on, let's go, let's go. You're not aloof, but instead, in line with that so-called boy-girl theory, you put yourself in that middle space and you invite them to meet you in the middle. And that's the best way to approach it conceptually. I think that in my experience, at least, that's going to get you the most consistent results because you're not trying too hard. You're not so aloof that you're making them do all the work. But again, you're putting yourself in that middle space, expressing energy, expressing your personality and seeing if they like it and then inviting them to come into your space in that middle and move from there. So now let's talk about the better deal theory. And this states that people often hesitate to close a deal because they're worried about missing out on a better option. Now, applying this theory to the process of dating involves understanding and leveraging the psychological dynamics that influence decision making and, and commitment in romantic relationships. At the most basic level, this is just FOMO, right? Fear of missing out. But just as in business, people in the dating world very often worry that committing to one person means they might miss out on a better partner. So this fear can cause hesitation. It can cause indecision, especially in the early stages of dating when multiple potential partners might still be in the picture. To counteract this fear, you've got to create a sense of urgency as well as perceived value. Just like a salesperson moves quickly to close the deal, in dating, you want to establish and maintain that connection, boom, very early on. Attraction happens fast or not at all. It's not going to happen through careful plotting and planning where you just beat around the bush and then somewhere down the line, theoretically, you're going to be like, surprise, I'm interested in you. No, you want to get them to the put up or shut up phase as soon as possible. Like, are we doing this or not? Right, let's go, right? And I've spoken about this in a previous video as well with the so-called fiddle theory. And I'll actually uh, link that for you right here on the card if you want to check that out. But again, the idea being you've got to close the deal as soon as possible. As soon as possible. Not before, but as soon as possible. Because the longer you fiddle around with it, the more chance it has to just evaporate and fall down like a castle made of sand. So having said all that, how do we apply these theories step by step? Imagine you're at a party. And you spot someone interesting across the room and you want to approach them. Now, I'd say the very first thing, if you're going to approach, and this is one of the biggest mistakes I see clients make, 
you must not be abrupt. You don't want to just run up and be like, hey, I see this all the time with my students. I had this the other night, in fact, on a boot camp. I said to the student, yo, you see this person at the bar? Why don't you go up to her and, and, and say this? Hey, excuse me, which one of these beers do you think will make me cooler? Now, the way that I would deliver that line, I would actually go up next to them and as opposed to immediately just launching into it, I'd sort of stand there for, I don't know, a couple seconds and then I'd kind of notice them. Oh, hey, excuse me. Let me ask you a question. Uh, which one of these beers do you think will make me cooler? <laughs> or, or like tougher? It'll make my beard grow faster. I saw it in the in the Super Bowl with uh, Travis Kelsey. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, hey, what's up? I'm Jeff. And roll into it from there. So what I'm doing there is I'm sort of not just rushing right in and being, hey, I'm giving it room to breathe, so to speak. It's a very casual approach as opposed to some weirdo doing weird shit. So the way the student did it, he just runs up like right up to the bar. He's like, hey, hey, what's up? Which one of these beers? Will make me and they, they can't even understand what the hell he's saying. He just pops out of nowhere. He's like, hey, excuse me, which one of these beers will make me cooler? They, they, she probably doesn't even understand what the fuck he just said. And they're kind of just sitting there like, like, whoa, like, like shocked and startled. Why? Because it looks very, very eager. Another thing that I notice all the time is say that I'm on the street near the end of the night and I'll be, I'll, I'll be speaking to the students. I'll be like, okay, hey, now I pro point with my elbow. I go, okay, approach them there. They're coming right now. They do one of two things. Either they'll just like charge up to him like, Hey, do, 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 like, like run right up all weird or, or the wait until they're literally like one foot away. And they'd be like, blur, do, 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 and blurt something out. They're not giving them enough lead time, so to speak. So their, their brain can't even process the fact that someone is addressing them and they're just like, huh? And then they just, they continue on. Or in the case where the guy runs up, he's like, it's like a weirdo doing weird shit. That's what it looks like. It's not like a, a spontaneous, normal thing. It's a weirdo doing weird shit. So you want it to appear very relaxed, very casual, and that's going to make you avoid getting into that desperate, needy vibe that renders you unattractive. But if I'm approaching someone on the street, I'm going to see them coming from a fair distance away like that. And before they even get near me, I'll probably start having like a funny conversation with my friend where I'm like literally laughing already. And then when they get about five feet away, I'll kind of notice them again. I'll be like, I'm already laughing. So I, I don't have to turn it on. I can just pull them right into the fun. I'm like, oh, hey, excuse me. Let me ask you a question. Do you know where the da 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 is? Because we da 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 And it just looks very confident. It, it, it's very relaxed. I'm smiling. It doesn't look like I'm a weirdo doing weird shit. Quite frankly, it looks like I'm cooler than them. And when I go in there, I'm, again, I'm smiling. My relaxed demeanor suggests that I'm confident with the approach. If you go up, you're like, oh, hey, hey. Again, it suggests lack of confidence, which is quite unattractive. Confidence suggests that you're not overly concerned with the outcome. And of course, this aligns with the theory that people want what they can't easily have. And, you know, I talked about going up and just the example I gave of saying, hey, which one of these beers will make me cooler? What is that? That's an icebreaker. Right, it's just an icebreaker. No matter what I say, hey, I'm, a, I'm, my name's Satan. I'm a professional mermaid. Hey, good evening. I'm the next idiot of the night speaking with you, or am I the first? Do I have the honor of being the first fucking idiot to <laughs> to address you this evening? And it will, probably won't be the last either. Hey, da 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 da. And I'll, when I say da 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 da, that means I'm going to roll into a different topic of conversation. These are just icebreakers. You're, I, look, very often that beer one, I'll send student in and I'll come in like 10 minutes later and they're still like having a debate about the merits of various beers. Like they're clinging to that conversation because they can't get off of it. Again, just crack off a, like that icebreaker and move on. Using a natural icebreaker like that makes the interaction seem spontaneous, makes it seem genuine rather than forced. And this helps to establish a connection without looking too eager. And all of the stuff that I just described is going to help you get past that social hook point where they go from thinking, why is this person speaking to me to, okay, this person's cool. Let's keep talking to them. Next, let's talk about building attraction. And you want to do that through light teasing and humorous statements that express your interest dropped in and then sort of plowed under almost subliminally. One of the biggest mistakes I see when people are dropping in statements of, of intent in their conversations is, They'll just drop it and then they'll wait there on pause, like waiting for the reaction. So for example, they'll be like, you're hot. What do you think of that? 
And the problem with this is now you're putting pressure on the other person. One very common statement of intent that I'll employ, I'll say, I love your look, it's hot. And when I drop that in, I don't just let it sit there. So the way that I would say that in practice, I'd be like, well, damn, you look very well put together this evening. Are you involved in the fashion business? I love your look. It's hot. So anyway, like I was saying, uh, I came here last week and my friend and I, da, 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 and I was go right into another story or, or anecdote or just kind of continue the vibe. So the statements of intent are like these little pebbles. They just get dropped in. The vibing is like a river. The statements of intent just go boink and get carried away. And again, they're always just these kind of humorous little things like, damn, were you always hot or were you a nerd and then you became hot? Light teasing and humor like this create a sort of playful atmosphere that shows you're confident. It shows that you're comfortable in the pocket, so to speak. And this approach makes you look more desirable. Why? Because it suggests you're not overly invested. And this aligns with the idea that people want what they can't easily have. It shows interest, but it also keeps things light and it makes you look more valuable and less desperate. Keeping it casual like this lets them feel they're still in the evaluation stage, right? Like they're evaluating you, you're still evaluating them. And that ensures they don't feel pressured to make a quick judgment about you. Another thing I like to employ is kind of like sassy clapbacks. You know, if they say something, I'll be like, oh yeah, da, 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 da. like I won't just roll over if they say, if they give me a test or they give me something, like I hate it. I'll be like, I hate you. I hate you too. I hate you more. High five, right? Again, that light teasing and humor goes a long way to create a playful atmosphere as opposed to a serious atmosphere or something with gravity. It's a big deal. The second that they can tell it's a big deal, it's done. So I'm creating that playful atmosphere with these little kind of statements of intent, these little teasing comments. But then in between that, what I'm doing is vibing. And what is vibing? It's just a non-goal oriented conversation where the feeling is the goal. Right. So as we talk and go back and forth, I'm, I'm probably talking about 70% of the time and they're responding and giving input about 30% of the time so I can control the conversation. And that 30% that they're giving me, I'm using that as input or, or seeds, if you will, for my intuition. Things will bubble up and I can tell little anecdotes related to what they're saying, you know, from my life. By sharing interesting, brief little stories about yourself you can kind of maintain an air of mystery and interest. And that keeps them engaged. It keeps them thinking about all the possibilities with you. And this aligns with that idea of not laying all your cards on the table, ensuring that they feel like there's more to discover. You know, I'll be like, oh yeah, da, 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 da. I'm telling these kind of little, very interesting stories about my life, but it's, it's, they're sort of bite-sized. So they're like, damn, this person's he's really smart. He's really funny. He's really well-traveled. He knows a lot about X, Y, Z. Like no matter what they say, my intuition is going to bubble up some sort of anecdote. Now, to be fair, I've been alive quite a long time. And my life's very interesting. But if that's not you, you're like, well, that's not me right now. Stay alive longer. Be intellectually curious. Travel. Have a wide variety of experiences. Read. That's how you build up those anecdotes so you can just blurt out and vibe. And then, of course, the other half of the vibing equation is letting go of needing it to be awesome. Right? Just letting go of needing it to be good. Releasing that judgmental factor. And then just letting just being a blurter and letting it go now when it comes to the end of the night you know deeper in the interaction if the chemistry is strong you can suggest continuing the night elsewhere and the way that i do that is i'll seed the pull i'll seed the pull and then i'll just invite them along so for example if i'm out at the park you know running some daytime interactions uh you know what what i'm i'm in there i've been dropping my little statements of intent the little fun playful comments I've been, uh, you know, again, vibing, vibing, vibing in the way I just described. And then I'll be like, yeah, me and my buddies here, we're going to go down to the karaoke bar later. I don't know if you've ever been there. It's the Mint Karaoke Lounge. It's a fabulous gay bar. I think it's the best karaoke bar in America, quite frankly. That's just my opinion. Have you ever been? Oh, no. Well, you're more than welcome to accompany us if you're so inclined. We'd love to have you. Just be a ball and a hell of a time. <laughs> and then I change the subject again. Boom, right back to vibing. And then later on, when, it, when it's time to, again, suggest leaving together, then I'll throw out the invitation. Well, I think it's karaoke time. Uh, would you care to accompany us? Shall we? Boom. And then just go. So suggesting it like this, this shows confidence. It shows continued interest without seeming desperate, maintaining that balance of availability and desirability. And again, this idea is this boy-girl theory, better deal theory. Th these ideas can be applied at every stage of any interaction, whether it's a business deal, whether it's a dating situation, very, very important to be aware of these things and bring them to bear on the conversation through your demeanor, 
through your level of investment. And again, just through the way that you're displaying self-assuredness, confidence, and, and keeping it light and fun as opposed to pressure and weird. But then of course, bringing it to the close as soon as possible. Now, if you want to see these concepts demonstrated live, because it's kind of hard to wrap, wrap your head around maybe over video, it's very abstract. If you want to see these concepts demonstrated live, I'd suggest you come on a live bootcamp with me. You know, I'm able to just go up and do this stuff on tap at will. You'll see me do it. I'll guide you through the, through the process yourself over the course of three days. And then I'll give you a, a mountains of feedback that's going to help you move away from these things that you're doing wrong that you're probably not even aware of right now and get you on the right path where you can become competent very, very quickly. Link for those programs in the description below. This has been Jeffy, and I'll see you next time. I've always been someone that uh, hid a lot of my emotions uh, since a young age because I was always like that. It's really safe to just not show any emotions, not show any arguments, uh, opinions. So over time, it has just created a big shell uh, on me. And with the Charisma program, I tried to really amp up my emotions a lot. And that caused me to really touch a source of emotion in me. So it, it was a bunch of big changes inside that I feel that it couldn't be possible without a program like that of just having to live up to some standards that I didn't have enough in the in the last uh, several years. It's been really helpful for me of just spending more energy instead of just trying to be calm all the time. And I've been really feeling it through my emotions over the last few weeks.